In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to prep your floor for tile, how to install your tile, and how to grout your tile. After your old floor is demoed or removed, or even if you're working in a new construction project, you're going to want to make sure the floor is perfectly clean and make sure any nails or screws are level with the top of your subfloor. You don't want anything protruding up because when you're laying your backer board, you don't want it to cause any issues and make the backer board unlevel, which will result in your tile being unlevel too. Now that our subfloor is perfectly clean, we're ready to mix up our mortar so we can trowel it out. We're using a quarter by quarter notch trowel. Then we're gonna lay a three by five half inch backer board down. The backer board we are using is called Dura Rock. To mix your mortar, you're going to need two five gallon buckets, one for the mortar and then one for water. And then you're going to want a paddle bit with a drill so you can mix up the mortar much like if you're making a pancake batter. So you pour powdered mortar into one bucket and then add water, mix it and add water as needed. You don't want to make it too runny and you don't want to make it too thick. So you kind of need to find that right consistency to get the mortar how you want it. For a floor like what we're doing now, I would recommend that your mortar be kind of like a pancake batter. You don't want it too thick like peanut butter because then it will be hard to spread and it doesn't adhere as well. As you're spinning the mud, you can kind of play with by adding more water if you're too thick or adding more powder if you've got it watered down too much. Now you're ready to travel the mortar onto the subfloor. This is going to be trial run for you for before tile, just getting the feel for troweling the mud out. You want to try and trowel it as even as you can. So typically when we're troweling, you want to throw it out, it doesn't matter how much, but get a good pile out there and then evenly trowel it with a quarter by quarter inch notched trowel. And then after you have it all troweled out and enough area covered for your backer board to lay in, then you're ready to throw your backer board in. Applying the mortar between the wood floor and the tile backer board is a very important part because if you don't do that and your flooring is not perfectly level and there's a little bow upward or downward and you put your backer board on without any kind of mortar, we run into then you get movement in your backer board and if you tile on top of that, your tile then will move too and you're gonna get crack and grout and your tile can even pop up and you're gonna have to pull it out apart and redo it. So it's very important to do this mortar and then make sure when you get your backer board laid in the mortar that you are fastening the backer board to the subfloor. For fastening our backer board, we're using a inch and a quarter uh, backer board screw and you wanna be about eight inches on center around the perimeter and you can go a little bit wider spacing in the field, but you can never attach too many but i think eight inch eight inches on center everywhere is kind of a good rule of thumb that we typically try and follow i should probably point out the reason for using a backer board is rather than trying to tile onto a wood floor where your mortar is not going to bond very well a backer board is going to give you a much better bond therefore you won't have any tile movement and you won't get any cracking of grout or debonding of the tile now that all the backer board is laid down in our tiled area, now we're going to mesh tape each seam, whether they are a butt or an edge joint. You want to mesh tape all that and then go back and use your mortar and kind of trowel it on like you're mudding drywall. Keep it as flat as you can because any ridging will obviously affect your tile when you're ready to install that. And much like doing drywall, getting a little ridge is kind of inevitable. All you have to do is go back with your trowel and knock it down flat. Final prep work we need to do before we're actually going to be laying tile is we need to cut our old door jam and 
trim upward. We have a chunk of tile and we use that as our height gauge and then we take our multi-tool, cut that jam and trim off. Now we're ready to start laying tile. We like to dry fit everything to make sure that we're square in the room and our layout will work out well. Because we're coming off of a doorway, we want to make sure we have a full tile. So we're going to notch one tile to go around the door trim and the drywall. That way we can get a full tile into the threshold and the transition and then work into the room from there. As we're working through the first row of our dry fit, we run into a vent. And just to help with making that initial row go faster when we actually have our mortar out, we're going to cut that vent out as well. That way we have the tile ready and we can throw it in. On this particular project, we opted to go with a, a handheld four inch grinder with a tile blade on it, only because we aren't worried about getting a perfect cut because every cut on this project will be buried by either trim, a vent cover, or under cabinetry. Now if we were doing a tile floor or any kind of other tile work where there will be cut edges that are showing, then we would be doing it on our wet tile table saw. And because we're cutting the tile dry, it's very important that you wear the proper protection. You need to wear glasses, which you should always wear whether you're cutting it dry or wet. And then it's very important to have a good mask on to make sure you're not breathing in any of the dust particles that are flying off the cutting wheel. Once you've cut all the way through your tile on the front edge, a lot of times you need to flip the tile over because of your round wheel, it doesn't get all the way into the corner without overcutting. So then flip it over, cut back. You kind of have to eyeball it. You should be able to eyeball it off of each line. And then when you're cut all the way through, that tile will fall out. Or if you have a little bit hanging up, you can usually tap it and break it out. Now we're ready to tile. We're happy with our layout and we know that we're perfectly square in the room. We go out and we're ready to mix up mortar. And much like the mortar for the backer board, you can pretty much copy the consistency of that again. And again with the mortar, make sure you get mixed up well enough to where it isn't too runny and it isn't too thick. If anything, doing a tile floor, I would err a little bit on it being a little wet. That way you know when you lay your tile in it, you have a good, a good bond between the two. One thing I forgot to mention in the layout portion of the video is that you need to pick out and decide what kind of grout spacer you want. Typically, we try and keep them to like an eighth inch. Anything larger than that, I think looks kind of unprofessional, but that's kind of personal preference and you can do what you want. But we are using an eighth inch on this floor. And then as we lay everything out, we're putting them in two on each butt joint everywhere. That way, you know you're getting an even gap and your grout will look even. Back buttering tile is a good way to make sure you get a good bond. A good rule of thumb is that if you have a tile 12 by 12 or 12 by 24, that you should back butter it and then anything larger for sure back butter. And if you're doing a littler tile, like a mosaic, then you definitely don't want to back butter it because it'll cause more issue than anything. And a littler tile, you can generally get to push into the mortar a lot easier and you know that you're getting a good bond. After you've back buttered your tile and you're laying it into the mortar that you've troweled on the floor, we like to wiggle it back and forth a little bit just to make sure we have a good bond between the two and then continue that with every tile. When you lay each tile in, we like to push them tight. That way you know if there's a lip or if one of them's too high or too low, then you can work them even and then you can gap them out your eighth inch and put your spacer in. After you have your first row complete, now it's kind of rock and roll time and you can move a lot quicker because you really don't have anything to cut and you're pretty much filling in full tile in the field and you can throw it in as quickly as you can get it back buttered and put it down. Part of your layout plan should be considering how you can finish the project and get out of the room. You don't want to paint yourself into a corner. Now we've laid all the tile right to left as much as we can until we can't like move back and forth. So now we're going to work from the back all the way to the front of the room and then that way we can get out of the room through the doorway.
not all the tile is laid and we have to let it dry. Typically with mortar, they recommend 24 hour cure time. So we'll leave it overnight and we'll be ready to grout tomorrow. It is now the following day. It's been about 24 hours since the completion of all the tile being installed. Now we're able to walk on it. Now we're going to go through, pull all of our spacers out and clean up any kind of mortar that may have got pushed through the grout lines. A very key thing while you're laying is to try and make sure to keep that mortar being pushed through. Try and keep it as minimal as possible. That way it'll reduce the prep work you have to do before you can do the grout. Now you have all the tile cleaned up and you're ready to grout. A lot like the mortar, you'll want multiple buckets, one with water, one to dump your grout powder into, and then you don't need as big of a drill or as big of a paddle with grout because you're going to want it to be a little bit more runny than your mortar. But again, you need to kind of play around with it. You don't want it too thick, you don't want it too thin. Now you're ready to grout the tile. Pretty much want to get the grout onto the end of your trowel pad. Put a blob of it on the tile and then you want to work across the tile with your trowel float at about a 45 degree angle. That way when you come across the grout line, the grout will work into the grout line and you'll kind of clean up the tile with that angle of the float as well. Now working at a 45 degree angle isn't always how you want to do it if you have larger tile and can avoid getting grout across the whole tile, then you can go right onto the grout line and just make sure that your grout is getting packed into that grout joint as much as possible. Now that the whole entire floor is grouted, we've left adequate time for it to dry. Now we go in with our bucket and our sponge and we're ready to clean. Now cleaning it, there's a ton of different ways to do it. The water bucket will be very helpful when you are cleaning to make sure that you keep the sponge and the tile as clean as possible. You're gonna to wanna to wipe, go back to the bucket and wring it out and then keep wiping. The cleanup part is actually important for making sure that your grout lines get perfectly filled in and your grout isn't overflowing or too low. So I like to do kind of a circular motion initially and then come back and do a really straight line or at an angle, much like when you're doing the grout with the trowel. After you've cleaned the floor one time, we like to go empty our bucket, clean any kind of grout left over in the bucket, get fresh water and make sure your sponge is very clean and then go back in after you've let the floor dry again and then you can clean one more time with really clean water and making sure you go back and forth from tile to bucket as often as you can because if you don't then you will smear the grout around more and then you're going to have to go back and clean again. After you've done all that let it dry and then when it's dry then you'll know if you need to clean a little bit more if there's any haze or anything like that and then if you don't need to clean anymore then you're done and you can let it dry. And with grout, you should let it dry kind of like the mortar about 24 hours before you can really use like heavy traffic or continue with doing any kind of trim work or cabinetry or anything like that. Now that you've let everything dry and you're happy with how clean the tile looks, you can move on to completing the room and your tile floor is done.